Hello everyone, my name is Nathan, and today it's time for the second episode of Shen's Hen. Ooh, this game is great. I cannot wait to continue and try out the next few circuits. Let's actually see what's in store for us. We have two new tasks right here. Rubbish audio thing and also bring out the Baron. Well, let's check out the audio thing first of all. Okay, interesting. As we can see, we have an audio in, a maximize switch and also a audio out. Audio in is connected to an audio source, the audio out is connected to an audio receiver and the maximize is a simple switch. Now here they actually want us to have a look into the harmonic maximization algorithm which you can find in the PDF in the manual. And I'm gonna put this section right here on the top left corner that states this algorithm. Now the algorithm basically says that we have to take the audio in signal and subtract 50 from it, then we have to multiply the result with 4 and add another 50 to that before we send it to the audio out. And we only do this uh, formula whenever the maximize switch is turned on. Simple as that. So let's go into the verification tab and check it out. Yeah, here you can see we are totally dependent on these two input signals. If we simulate this, we can see the maximize is already done for us and also the audio in. All we have to do is grab a couple of modules and hook them up. So the first thing I want to place right here is a CPU and we want to hook the maximize output, no input up to the P0. So we need to kind of detect when maximize is turned on. So once we know whether or not maximize is turned on, we can take the signal from this bad boy, for instance, in a... Mm, no, actually, now we can take the buses, these guys right here, because we can take this signal and hook it up to this guy. And this leaves us still one of these guys free in order to hook them up with the audio in and the P1 needs to go to the audio out. Because I can only use these marked with yellow arrows in order to connect two modules with each other, but they basically work the same way. They will transfer information from one module to the other. Okay, great. So let's first of all detect whether or not Maximize is on and depending on that state, we can send out a signal. That means what we want to have, we want to check for the P0 signal. We want to move that into the accumulator so that we can do a couple of tests. We can, for instance, test if the accumulator is equal to zero. That would basically mean the Maximize is off. Actually, maybe we don't even need to move it to the accumulator. Maybe we could just uh, move the P0 to the X1. Yeah, let's actually test this out. If it doesn't work, we can always change it. So we are gonna directly check if uh, P0 is equal to zero. And if that is the case, then we want to move zero through the X1 thingy-machingy right here. And be aware that as soon as you activate this, this is always gonna be active. So if we want to change the information or get rid of it, I believe we have to change it here again. So no matter how many cycles we go through, if we initialize this once, then this line is gonna be active. At least I believe that's how it works. Anyways, after that, we want to sleep for one second. So let's think about the case when there is actually a 100 on the maximized switch. That would mean if it is 100, then uh, we can just use a minus sign. And if you don't remember from the previous episode, this is basically an if statement and plus and minus signs correspond to the if statement. So plus means yes, execute, because that is true. And minus means this is not true and therefore we execute the minus. So in case the maximize button is not zero, that means it is turned on. We can say move one to x1. So let's actually test this out just to be sure that it works. So at the moment we are comparing, the maximize is at zero. That means we are gonna move zero through x1, as you can see here. And then we sleep for one. I'm not sure 
Oh, I did something wrong here. Ah, okay, so I cannot really do that. I don't think I can compare the P0, so this is exactly what I thought. We have to move P0 to the accumulator first, and then we can compare the accumulator to 0. And like this, theoretically, it's still not working. <laughs> so maybe it is a problem because we are not listening to this bus, to this X1 bus. And we can, of course, listen to that using the SLX command. So we basically want to listen for whatever is coming through here. We're just gonna listen and whenever something comes through then hopefully we can advance. Well, let's imagine this is working at the moment. I have to debug this later on. We basically use this command to listen to this line. We also need to listen to the audio in signal, which is going to be a number between 0 and 100. So we could, for instance, move whatever we have in P0 to the accumulator. Okay, so now we have both numbers imported into this module. We know whether or not uh, the module is turned on, the maximize switch, and we also know the P0 audio input. Let's go ahead and compare a few things. We want to compare the X0 bus with 0 because that basically means it is not turned on at the moment, the maximize switch. So if the maximize switch is not turned on, we basically want to output the same we are inputting. So you can see this input and output, they are basically the same all the way up to this point where we launch the maximize setting. And as of this point, it changes dramatically. And this is where we have to apply the formula you can see on the top left. So let's say if this uh, equal test actually fails, then that means the maximize switch is on. And that means we have to apply the formula. The first thing we want to do is subtract 50 from uh, our current audio input signal. And we can do that right here because we already moved it to the accumulator where we can do calculations. Then we want to multiply it by 4 and we also want to add 50. There we go. And this only happens if the maximize switch is on. So that means we can now actually move the accumulator Accumulator to P1. Uh, let's see, move accumulator P1. There we go, because we have calculated the formula depending on the switch. Now, we might still have to fix something because, I don't know. Ah, look at that, it's actually working. Let's have a closer look at that. So, this thing here is just listening until we have a signal. And when there is no signal, it just keeps waiting, right? But now we do have a signal, we have a zero, and therefore it is moving. It is moving whatever comes from the audio into the accumulator, as you can see, and then it is comparing this line with zero. If it is zero, it will jump to here and actually move whatever we have in the accumulator to the audio out. Great, okay, so this is working fantastically. Now at this point right here, we are actually changing stuff because because the maximize switch is now turned on. We moved that already to the accumulator and therefore we're gonna move a number one through this line here. And now that we have something going through this line, this code is gonna be activated. We move whatever we have in P0 to the accumulator. And now since the maximize switch is on, these conditions are gonna be executed. That means we subtract 50, which results in 5, then we multiply this by 4, which is 20, and add another 50, which is 70, and then we send it to the output. Beautiful! Oh yes, guys, this is so satisfying. It is still, still very easy at this point. I'm not sure how you think about it. But I'm sure this is just to prepare us for the worst case scenarios where we really have to get our brains going. But there we go. So production costs weren't too shabby. I guess that is in the green margin. And right here, power usage is very low from the looks of it. That is great. Let's return to the email. Okay, we unlocked a couple of things, but we first of all want to bring out the Baron, I guess. <laughs> Ooh, interesting. So here for the first time we actually have a display that can output three numbers from the looks of it. We also have a point and a foul input. Point and foul are simple inputs connected to buttons. And the display is an Xbus output connected to a numerical display. Interesting. So when the point button gets pressed, we have to add a number. And if the foul button gets pressed, we have to subtract a number and then we have to display it. Interesting. Let's have a look at the verification. Ooh, that is so cool. I love how they solved that. This is great. 
So here we can see the interval of the point being clicked. So for instance, right here, we want to add one. And then since this stays active, we don't want to add another one. Okay, I see the difficulty in this. You cannot simply add one whenever point is on because otherwise you would add too much. And then right here, we would subtract one. Okay, okay, I can see this working. Let's actually do this with three separate modules. I don't think I can do it any other way. We want to, first of all, hook up this guy right here. So this would be P0, we cannot really see it. Yeah, we should do it like so, so we can see that this is P0. Then we probably need the same scenario for this guy. So what we are gonna do is basically check whether or not this is turned on and we're gonna make sure that it only counts one, no matter how long it is turned on for. Same thing right here. Let's think about the addition first, maybe. So we want to check if the point thingy machingy is turned on. I, I think I'm gonna label this. So we check if it is on, right? So test equal, we want to test P0 against 100. If it is 100, then that means point is turned on. Okay, if that is the case, then we want to move 1 to P1, I guess. So this line is going to be hooked up to another module. Let's check this out. Um, how do we do this? I guess we will have to hook up the bus with the bus because that's the only pin type that matches. I cannot hook this guy up, for instance. Yeah, doesn't work. Then this P1 we could hook up with the P0 right here and this output or signal we can hook up with this p1 here so all we have to do is add a bridge like so okay i think that's gonna work okay now we moved number one through p1 right here so this is now p1 that should be good that means we can now sleep for one time unit and then we are gonna move 0 to P1. So that means we only send P1 or we only send the number 1 through P1 a single time unit. So it doesn't matter if the switch or the button is pressed for two time units, it's only gonna turn on once because we sleep and then we turn it off again. Okay, now we define the off stage, which is basically test equal P0, 0. If P0 is 0, then we don't press the button anymore. So at this point, we want to, I guess, sleep for another time unit before we continue. Yeah, that makes sense. However, we also want to make sure that we cycle through the formula in case the button isn't off yet. So if we are right here and the player or whatever, the button is still pressed, we test that right here. So if P0 is zero, then after one time unit of sleeping, we want to restart the checking mechanism. But if it is not zero, if it is still pressed, then we want to jump back to the off label. So right here, it's gonna cycle through this sleeping phase here, as long as the button is still pressed. And only if it is not pressed anymore, we start from the top. So theoretically, that should do the trick. Now, of course, there's no way to test that other than just going through it. So for instance, we check if the switch is on, it is off, so we sleep. There we go. We check if it is on, it is off, sleeping, and now it is on for the first time. So we moved one through P1. Now we sleep for one time unit and we deactivate this signal again. So we don't add it with every cycle. We only want to add one number. Now it is off again and we actually sleep for one second and jump back to this check here and it's gonna do this check for as long as the point is activated but it is deactivated now again so we can start from the beginning it's functioning more or less the way I want it to so we do the same thing right here we test equal p0 100 and if that is the case we want to move one to p1 and we also want to sleep one and we want to move zero to p1 if it is off tech 
P00. And we want to sleep one and we want to jump back to off. Okay, now we have both of these inputs and all we have to do is simply add them to the display, I would say. So that would be simply doing calculations with the uh, accumulator, I guess. So we can say add P0, subtract P1 every cycle, and then we move the accumulator uh, through the X1 bus here. Okay, and after that we sleep for one time unit. Okay... That theoretically should work. Now, the only thing that confuses me is the timing. I mean, this is gonna execute at the same time as this, and this is not gonna work. Yeah, look at that. It's executing at the same time, and therefore we will be getting wrong numbers. If I simulate this, yeah, numbers are gonna be wrong here. That's not good. Usually, if you have a bus, and that's the good thing about buses, you can actually just wait until you have a signal. So, for instance, I could say SLX X1 or X0, and then it would just wait until there is something going through this. But since we cannot do it at this point, I would say we're just gonna use the knob functionality, which basically means nothing should happen. And if we add this twice, then we should be on this line, this line, and then at the sleep. Yeah, I think we only have to, like, go through two empty lines. So if we activate this, you can see nothing is happening here while we are moving on with the next step. So that means we should now be outputting a zero. Let's see. Yeah, look at that. And if we advance, then yeah, I think this is working out. Uh, just two knobs are actually doing the trick. Look at that. We are outputting all the numbers as requested. Oh, this is amazing. This is a lot of fun, I have to say, especially because you are creating things that are so concrete. I mean, we've created this billboard that is making the drinking and animation, now we are simulating this display and so on and so forth. It's amazing. Okay, we did this one as well. Production costs, well, in the upper region and also the power usage. But what are you gonna do? I'm a rookie. Great! Okay, let's return to email. I would say at this point we are probably gonna wrap up the episode. Look at that. We unlocked so many things right now. There's three new circuit things that we can create. Infra red sensors, great prototyping new ideas and virtual reality buzzer. Sounds all very intriguing. I hope you guys are with me the next time. Don't forget to tune in. Have a great time. Thank you for your support on this and the first episode and hopefully I'm gonna catch you soon. Bye bye.